Hey guys, so if you follow our Instagram account, you've probably seen that Diane has made a beautiful translucent glass morphic chat bubble tutorial. And here is the video version of that, but instead of orange, we're gonna be using blue. I will be using Sketch to create this, but it's gonna be exactly the same in Figma. So don't worry, just follow along, whether it's in Figma or Sketch, you're gonna be fine. Okay, let's start from the beginning. I'm starting with an empty artboard and I'm gonna keep it at 1080 by 1080 and then I create a rectangle on it. I want my bubbles to be a little bit different than in the Instagram tutorial, so I'm gonna use a 48 corner radius, but you can use whatever you like. Now select the rectangle and press enter, and then holding shift, click on every side of the rectangle in the very middle of it, which is gonna create four additional points. Click and select those points and change their type to mirror. It's the second option here on the right. Once you've done that, select every individual point and then you can use the shift key and the arrow to nudge it a little bit up, down, left and right. And you can use just one shift and arrow, so one nudge, or you can use more. I'm gonna use two to make my rectangle a little bit more rounded. Now press enter again and create three very close to each other points on the bottom edge of the rectangle from either side that you wish. And then simply drag the middle point down. Now let's duplicate the shape and mirror it horizontally. That will give us two speech bubbles that are facing each other. But because we want one of them to be bigger and we want the corner radius to actually stay proportional, make sure to select that object and flatten it. And then you can resize it. So now it's time to remove the border and add some color. And I'm gonna color them red for just a while and one of them is gonna be a little bit darker. That way I will finally see where each one begins and the other ends, but I want them to be blue. Select the shade that you like and then create a linear gradient that has the exact same color on both sides. Make it diagonal from top left to the bottom right and then decrease the opacity of each of the colors. So I'm gonna keep the top left corner at about 10% and I'm gonna play around with the value of the bottom right corner, but it can be anywhere between 50 and 80%. Now create another linear gradient for the second object, but this time don't use any transparency on the colors, so they need to be fully opaque. And make sure that the darker color is the one on the bottom right and then the lighter version of it is in the top left. You can of course name your layers for clarity and then rearrange them a little bit so every bubble is in the position that you want it to be. And once you're ready, you can add the background blur to the top bubble. Make sure that the overall opacity of the object is at 100%, so the only transparent parts should be the edges of the gradient here. And now you can tweak the background blur value until you like the final effect. The next step is all about adding a little bit of a 3D depth to the top bubble. So I'm creating an inner shadow, I'm gonna keep it white and the X and Y value are gonna be zero. But then let's add a blur of about 50 or 60 and change the blending mode to overlay. And of course at every stage you can modify any of the values like the blur or the gradient or the transparency. You don't have to follow along exactly the way I do it. You can create your own version. I modified the opacity of the gradient a little bit so my top bubble is gonna be a little bit clearer. Now let's add a shadow under the bottom bubble. So to do that we could of course just add a shadow effect to it, but to have a much nicer and more natural shadow, let's just duplicate the entire shape and then Gaussian blur it. Make sure the blurred shadow is underneath the bubble on the layer list and then simply move it to the right spot and decrease the opacity. Now duplicate the top bubble in place, select it, just one instance of course, and then mask it with the bottom bubble. And once you move the top bubble within the mask a little bit to the right and down, you're gonna see something like this. This is going to be our shadow, so change the color to something a little bit darker and they don't have to be transparent anymore. And also replace the background blur with a Gaussian blur, so it should be a blurry shadow underneath our bubble. The next step is to create a typing indicator icon, so it's just gonna be three dots side by side. And I'm creating three circles, making sure that they are the same distance from each other and then changing their color to white. And of course you can also union those shapes, so it's gonna be one shape. You can use a rectangle trick to align them precisely in the center of the bubble, but just skip the triangle. Now add some blurred shadow to those dots, but make sure that the shadow color is actually coming from the bottom bubble, so it's just gonna be a nice matching hue. 
Our bubbles are looking pretty good, but we can actually make them pop a little bit more if the background is gonna match them. So instead of white, let's create a very light gradient from the colors that are in the bubble. So we can use actually the colors from the translucent bubble for sides of the gradient and the very top gradient part could be white. Okay, the bubbles are looking really good, but let's give them some context. I'm gonna use the clay mockups that we've created a tutorial for on our Instagram page as well. If you follow us on Instagram, you can find the post and you can either follow the tutorial for them or you can download them completely free and use them. So I just copy and paste the style of the background onto the mask on the phone and then I just simply add the bubbles to the phone. Illustrations like that look really cool in the onboarding process. So if you're working on a UI design portfolio, you can just add a little bit of text and a button and have a pretty nice screen that you can add to it. Just make sure that the label on the button is vertically in the middle, otherwise the whole effect may be lost. And there you have it, a quick 5 minute tutorial in which you can create a pretty nice looking illustration. But I also encourage you to use your own colors and your own shadows, so try to make it your own. If you decide to create your own version, make sure to share it with me on Twitter or in the comments below. So thanks guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. And you can find other awesome tutorials on our Instagram page at Hype4Academy.